This is Co-Pilots, the podcast where we watch not just the first episode of a show, but also the second. Some shows just don't have the best pilot episode, and giving it that second chance might just sway your mind. Here we take that chance for you, and let you know our opinions on if it deserves more than one shot. I'm Justice. Alongside me is my co-pilot, Josh. Now, let's get ready for takeoff. Your in-flight entertainment this week on Co-Pilot's pilot episode will be Pilot Candidate, also released as Emotion the Best, The Candidate for Goddess. In Pilot Candidate, the planet Zion is mankind's last hope for survival, but the legions of victim are intent on destroying humanity. Five humanoid fighting weapons called Ingrids are capable of stopping the onslaught, but only the best pilots are chosen to become pilot candidates. The fate of Zion rests with these chosen few. Okay, so let's unpack that description real fast. What is a victim? I don't know, but they're intent on destroying humanity. Man, even in 2000, victim culture was a big problem. Okay, so victims are actually an alien force that is wiping out the human empire, I guess. It's not really called an empire in the show, but... It's an empire where space. space everywhere, giant fucking robots. Apparently, we're also the only thing that still exists in the galaxy, like so many other space-faring fantasies. And also in that first description, we get the term Ingrid. What the hell's an Ingrid? Um, well, you know, they're humanoid fighting weapons. It says that in the description. You should pay more attention. Gundams? Not Gundams. Gundams are cool. This show was bad. Okay. I mean, you should listen to that review we have coming up. Don't just take my immediate word for it. Let's go to episode one, Curriculum Double Zero, Connection. So the show opens with its OP. It's definitely a late 90s OP, though. Yeah. I don't know. There was something about it in its horn parts that made me feel like I was listening to the beginning of a 60s family show, which, uh, you know, those don't turn out the greatest. But I hope still, I guess. Now, the 90s was really hammered home by the amount of poor CGI in this opening, though. Namely, when they were showing the statues of the goddesses. Yeah, that was... The poses were neat. It looked cool, except for the fact that I'm pretty sure just your average run-of-the-mill local commercial has better CGI nowadays. Now, should we be a little nicer to this scene as it is from 2000? Probably. Or? We should probably just point out it's bad CGI, but that's what you're going to get in the early 2000s, late 90s. However, of course, because we're talking anime, that opening has a sick-looking cat girl in it. By which I mean, there's a cat girl, I guess. And spoilers ahead, we're, we we watched the first two episodes, as is the idea of the show. Cat girls? No. Also, they don't talk about, like, beast humanoids at any point, or no. anyone with animal features. It's just cat girl. No. She's there. In the show, all we get are humans and victims, which are distinctly not humans as far as we Plus know. Plus giant robots and weird hallucination bullshit. Okay, let's get into the show then. So it opens on Zion, the last planet, and it shows... Ingrids, which I'm going to refer to as mechs unless we actually have to yeah. call them Ingrids. They're these pretty cool feminine-looking mechs, and I do like the design, but again, that CGI, though. We open on these Ingrids fighting some victims, and after they finish blowing them up... Which they do by just calling a giant weapon to them. I, It's very unclear if it just teleports to them, like through hyperspace or some shit, or... I don't know. It just appears, they blow it to hell, and it's gone. And then we focus on a transport ship. Well, at first we get exposition. Here, it's 4084. Only Zion is the planet left. And that that's basically it. Though I would like to note, that victim they're fighting? To give you a great picture, think of Mario Brothers. That giant zap fish? Yeah, it's that, but really malformed, and I'm pretty sure they've been starving it for a while. It might actually be a victim in this case. So, not victim culture? Actual victim? You know, it's hard to tell. We only watched two episodes. Okay. Then we go to the um, transport ship. Yeah, where we meet our main protagonist, Candidate 88. Apparently, these people actually have names. Uh, Josh paid attention. I didn't. They're just given numbers for the most part, so that's who they are to me. They left no impression. Candidate 88's name is Zero, which isn't at all confusing, seeing as they refer to everybody as numbers anyways. He's just got two numbers, because he's special. I wonder if he's confused with Candidate Zero. Is there a Candidate Zero? Can Questions the show didn't answer and probably never will. It only got one season. Candidate 1 is one of the pilots of the Ingrid, so maybe there's a Candidate 0? Head of the weird galaxy committee thing, whatever it is. Possible. So we meet not just our protag, but his, what will be friends throughout the 
first two episodes in probably the season. We also meet his instructor, who is just this guy who's shuttling them places. He also has a name, but more importantly, he also has a number. Number nine. He is number nine. His name is Azuma. He's candidate nine. Don't call them number something here. That makes me think codename Nick Kids Next Door. And that made me happy as a child. This would have made me sad. So, so sad. Back to the protagonist. 88, also known as Zero. Just pretty generic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you know? It's this little bumpkin's first time off world. He's in space for the very first time. He is just so excited. Yeah. I know. Who could have guessed? So, he gets into a confrontation with 87, your stereotypical... I have to be the opposite of the pro tag guy. Who's he, gonna be one of our pro tags still? He's edgy edge lord. That's yeah. What, what and so, eighty seven storms off after their little argument. We also have another guy in the background. Eighty nine. He does shit. Nothing. But uh, I would like to point out he has this wonderful character feature in his design. He's wearing a dress shirt that has built in fingerless gloves. Like that was that was a cool design. I actually forgot about that. Oh, no, I took a note on that. That was noteworthy for me. But, so, 87 storms out onto this bridge, and 88 goes to follow, and there's this giant space explosion off in the distance, because apparently it was happening simultaneously as the Ingrid's fighting the victim. And we get this very classic anime rom-com moment, where, you know, generally we'd have our main character fall into that girl he likes, or kind of likes him, but of course he falls into 87. And... They argue again, and 88 does this whole weird red eyes thing and appears to get super speed in. What's he do with that super speed? Hold on. Oh, sorry. Not only does his eyes change color, his hair glows. Oh, he's going full Super Saiyan. Okay, he's going full Super Saiyan. But what does he do with those Saiyan powers? He pulls down 87's pants. Yep. Yep. Ah, man. And uh, then we have 89 to come out to be that one guy who's just there. I'd like to point out, he's your classic glasses character. Oh, we don't get a lot on him because, well, everyone knows those are tertiary characters. And he's just kind of seems slightly smart, calm, collected, and also kind of reprimands them about they're both being idiots. Which is fair. They're both idiots. Oh, that's so true. So while all this is going on, we also got some exposition during this scene. We find out that the candidates all have a unique blood type called EO. We don't know what that means. It's what makes them apparently capable of piloting. Additionally, they also have something called an EX, which, after a little bit of wicking, is their special powers, like how 88 can go super speed. Because someone did more than just watch the episodes. Overachiever. Look, there's a lot of terminology in this episode that isn't explained. Exactly! You gotta let that shit rest on its laurels, which are bad. It explains nothing. Now, don't get me wrong, it has 10 more episodes, I think, to do that. I think it's a 12-episode season. Apparently, it never does that. But, no, it, it leaves questions, which would be fine. If it looked like it was going to answer them at any point. Okay, so re- disregarding my wiki knowledge here, we also find out that they're heading to the Pilot Training Academy, GOA. Goa. We don't find out what GOA means in either episode. And that there have only been 3,000 candidates ever, and count- including 80, 87, 88, and 89. Why, why they're 87, 88, and 89 when they're... I assume we repeat numbers when people die. Fair. But- like Social Security numbers. Fair, but... Candidate 9, their mentor, specifically said that there's only been 3,000 ever. Yeah, other people have died. Okay. So many times. Fair. So, this also brings me to that. My next point, we find out that only men can pilot Ingrids. Generally only men. We also find out that there's only five. Only five of these mechs that are called Ingrids. There's only five of them. They're also called goddesses. They are. They're called Ingrids. They're called goddesses. They each have their own individual name. We find out later it's annoying and they use them interchangeably so much they also refer to them as mechs at least once yeah but what do we know we find out there's only one female pilot and she's the best of the best and also the youngest and she is candidate number one yep her name is tila candidate one she doesn't have names these people don't deserve names her Ernest, rio ua and gar are the pilots of the five ingrids the way to tell them apart i guess not that they all look the same but just as a way to try to remember them Try to remember their hero collars. I use the word try because I have notes here of collar names to go with them. I got nothing. Rio has orange hair. He's also really loud. Ah, he's excitable. That's who this note's for. You has black hair and he has a green black outfit. And we I'm pretty sure he's number eight. We don't get a lot of him like in the episodes. Then we have Gar. He has green hair and a blue outfit and he's very brash and. Bold. I argue it's Seafoam. 
Yeah, Seafoam Green. And he's also the pilot of the one Max whose name we learn, Lena. And then we have our fifth pilot, Ernest. Because, man, don't you just love having a good old Ernest on your team? He's also very poetic and depressing. That's what my notes say. Oh, okay. So we meet all those people real quick. They kind of mess around. They don't really seem very friendly with each other, but they're familiar with each other at least. Okay, before we go on, I do want to point out something. You mentioned Gar's, um, Ingrid's name is Lena. Yeah, I figured we could wait to get to that pile of steaming garbage. That's fair. So, the transport ship docks, they get... Am I missing You're missing something? something. Oh. You're missing that great anime trope that helps save your budget. We get some nice shadow peeps. I love shadow people. But we have some shadow people talking about how the pilot's stress can cause problems. They don't explain those problems. They're vague. They're slightly menacing about it. I, I don't know where they're going with it. It's just vague, slightly menacing, way to save an art budget. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like background shadow people. You're talking about the two guys who are talking. Yeah, no, there aren't background and, shadow and people. Just, That'd be better. Just, ex, just expositing all over the place. We see these people three times across the two episodes. Expositing poorly, by the way. We see them three times across the two episodes, and every time we see them, all they do is exposit. And they're just shadows. They're not even moving shadows. They are just silhouetted shadows that look like maybe they're sitting in chairs. To give you an idea, Justice and I are sitting in chairs right now, and we are moving more than the shadow people were. I don't move. I am robot. This is my existence. You are a shadow person? I wish. I wish. Okay, so... After that exposition, the transport docks. Yes. Yes, it does. So, Azuma goes off somewhere, tells them they need to meet back somewhere else. Yeah. But before he goes off, he slaps them with this weird technology thingy, and they get branded with numbers, because what better way to remember you're pointless and you mean nothing than with a nice number branded on your wrist? Don't say it. Skip it. So, then they get a shot of the mechs, and sounds... As 88 wanders around trying to get to his introduction. Because, what do you know, their instructor walked off and it's first time at Goa. He just told them where to go. He didn't tell them how to get there. Yeah, he's a great he's instructor. Like, meet at this room. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, totally. So, he's wandering around trying to get there. And then we cut back to the mech bay where we see a mechanic lady working on Gar's mech. You it know, isn't the mech named Lena. Yeah, he's she's working on the mech Lena. And it isn't wanting to respond. And we get, like, a kind of zoom in up towards its face, and we're hearing the, a voice that's kind of calling to 88 as he's wandering. So, I wonder where he's going to end up. Oh, wait. It's obvious. Is it the mech bay? It's the mech bay. How'd he get in there? Aren't those things locked? Those are the last five no, weapons. No, he just walks into an elevator, pushes a button, and boom, he's right in the mech bay. But those are the last five weapons humans have to fight off the victim menace. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, okay, he's not trained. Maybe he does not operate the mech. Fun fact. So, he wanders over to where she is. She's harassing him about why he's there. And, what do you know? She accidentally knocks him into this weird gel-like capsule in the middle of the mech's chest. And he goes inside. And she can't get him out. Because he's apparently sinking with the mech now. There is nothing keeping random people from wandering into this mech bay. And just hijacking these giant weapons of mass destruction. Other than the fact that you have to be compatible with the mechs. You can still get inside of it and just die. That's fair. Can I mention what I wanted to earlier now? Yeah, go ahead. So, the mech that he's fallen into, its name is Lena. It belongs to Gar, the guy in the blue and white outfit, and he's like the ace pilot other than the girl. He's like the default team leader kind of guy. But the woman who's working on the mech is A. She's called a repairer. That's right. Their mechanics are called repairers. Repairer. Her name is also Lena. That's right. Lena works on the Lena mech. Why? I I don't know. They now, wanted to make things more confusing for us already. Now, I want to just point out, we know we find out later that it's not that the mechs are named, that the mechs repairers are named after them. That's not the case at all because Yu's repairer is his sister. She has a different name. I can't remember what it is. It doesn't matter. Some very traditional Japanese name. These people all are definitely of different ethnicities. And he's Japanese. But Lena is the repairer for Lena. Also, repairer. Yeah. So, our main character, 88, Zero, whatever you want to call him, falls into this mech. And, and we get this brief cut of a girl by a tree repeating the word, find me, the thing that they've been repeating up until 88 got there. 
And then it cuts back outside where the mech has scanned and recognizes him as a pilot, which is kind of a major problem since apparently these mechs can only have one pilot at a time, which means we're getting this fresh blood newbie all of a sudden piloting one of the five things to save humanity because someone couldn't put a lock on a door. It's really sad when it's an entire space station. Think of how many doors should have locks on them, but don't. Think how many times candidates have accidentally been walked in on. Well, I like to imagine they just stumble out of airlocks and die. That's why there's been 3,000 of them. No one knows what a lock is in this universe. It's just, hey, you know, my instructor walked off. I think this is the way in my introduction. Oh my god, I'm in the vacuum of space now. If they don't know what locks are, are they called airlocks? Air gates. They are now air gates. That is my term for it in this world now. Okay, so undiverging. Back on topic. 88 falls, falls into the mech, but not only do we get the, the, the tree and the girl calling to him, the Ingrid manifests in his mind as an actual person. It's the same girl that was standing by the tree. Don't know why that vision's there. Maybe and, it explained it. I doubt it. And now she's a naked woman. Oh, she's a naked woman. And the best part is, as the mech continues to sink to his brain, we learn that if the level is wrong and it can't sink entirely, they'll just die. So he's sitting there floating in this weird water gel egg thing, whatever it is inside the chest of the mech. And the girl's floating above him, and repeating the same line, surrounding him. And her hair is, like, surrounding him. Oh, yeah, it starts to grow out and surrounds him. It's really odd. This shot is actually fantastic. Oh, like, it's, it's a great shot. It's really well done. Probably one of the best shots in the show. But it's with a confusing line from her that's saying she has separated into him many times. Not separated from him. Nothing like that. Separated into him many times. Yep, and that ends the first episode right there. Yeah, which we think in our ending... Which is, it's fairly nice. It's just the characters slowly sliding by and fading past across a star-filled background. Yeah. Very 90s. The song was alright. If you've seen pretty much any mainstream 90s anime, you've seen this type of outro before. At least animation-wise. The song, you've probably heard better. The still shot of a background, in this case space, and all of your main characters are in a pose and just slide right by. Yep. So, post notes for the first episode, for me. I think... The show has some threads after the first episode that are vaguely worth following. I'm kind of interested in knowing what's going on with this mech lady. Like, that cool shot at the end where she's surrounding him with her hair. It's odd, but it's neat. So that got me a bit interested. I do want to know more about the mechs. I did say I liked the design. And I might be tempted to watch it all the way through. Like, after the first episode, I'm thinking about possibly watching it. It seems like it's going to be a very, very generic mech anime trying to be more special than it is. But it could be an alright ride. Now, we did also watch the English dub as well, because we hate ourselves. That we do. And, fun fact, no one in this English dub speaks like a human. The dialogue sounds like robots. It sounds like a robot wrote it. Oh, yeah. And, like, that can be somewhat acceptable, given that if you're trying to go for a direct translation from Japanese to English, it's going to sound a bit weird. The worst part, the worst part, is the dubbing the movement of the words to the lips. It's very bad. It might be some of the worst dubbing I've ever seen. There are moments where people are speaking, no mouths are moving. Or someone's just holding their mouth open like they're screaming in pain or agony. Or like me, deep mental torture and nothing is coming out. Okay, so this actually cuts to episode two. But I just it's on the point of how bad the dub is. In, se- in episode two, Gar comes back to the hangar at some point. And confronts Lena about a person being in his mouth. When he's yelling at her, his mouth is moving like a normal mouth. It doesn't look like he's screaming at all. When she gets down and is in front of him and talking, his mouth is like all the way open like he's yelling. Except now, the dub is normal talking. Also, when he's yelling, voice-wise, not not animation-wise, the mouth is moving like he's talking. And it's also moving really, really fast. It's so bad. I, I know that's from episode 2 and we haven't got to episode 2 yet. But I had to mention it. Oh, it's yeah. Atro- yeah. atrocious. Just we're, we're not going to talk about the dub after this. Just had to point it out. So, Josh, your thoughts post-episode one. It was weird, okay? Like, victims look weird. Ingrid's... Giant malformed zapfish. I was on board with it. I like Mario. Ingrid's, or goddesses, or the mechs, whatever you want to call them, they're kind of cool. They kind of remind me, like, visually of Darling and the Franks. Which, I, I get that, yeah. Which I actually liked what I've seen of Darling. Uh, part of it, I think, partially in the CGI and some of the more feminine shape, which is an odd term to use, kind of remind me of some of the mechs from um, IGPX, actually. I love IGPX. 
Don't whisper into the mic. This is ASMR. We are not that odd and creepy. We are odd and creepy, but not that far. Not yet. Okay, so really for me, it was it was a whole mishmash of weird. The like cutaways into these like dream sequence when he got in the mech. Which they're not even well done. It's just suddenly dream sequence. The like random line from the mech, which I hope the series explains. Yeah, I know it doesn't. I mean, in the maybe first two. she has this. Maybe the entities that cons- that are the mechs are these weird nano machines. So it's separated into it many times. Maybe it's integrating with his body. That would make sense. My, but I doubt it. What I would prefer as like the overall story element. Yeah. Is because these mechs are physical embodiments of gods or goddesses. Supposedly, yeah. Is that the reason why they can only have one pilot at a time? Is the pilot reincarnates, and so she's separated into it many times. That would it, make sense. It's a really cool idea. But what about the filler pilot? Is it just this random schmuck who's definitely meant to die? Well, no. I think with Gar, he's the actual reincarnation of the pilot that's supposed to pilot Lena. I think because he's the protagonist, eighty-eight special. He's been he can pilot all the mechs. Exactly. That's exactly where, where I was going. Yeah, I see it. Like Sadly. that sounds like like a protagonist plot line. It's why he would be special. Like, dropping some wiki knowledge here, we know he has the same EX abilities as that one female pilot, the only female pilot. Candidate number one. And that alone makes him special because her EX powers are super, like, strong. But other than that, we know nothing that makes him special other than he has special blood. But apparently all pilots have special blood. Yeah. So at the end of episode one, how are you feeling? Are you you thinking you'd watch more? Are you hoping we don't have to watch that second episode despite our gimmick here? Okay, at the end of the first episode, I'm intrigued. But I have zero hopes... That it's going to resolve it. It just doesn't seem like it has to cut It's got 12 episodes and so many plot lines going here. I have zero hopes that this show will actually end up being good because it's trying to do too much in a limited time frame. Now, it's introduced what- us to eight main characters already. Supposedly eight. Assuming all the mech pilots are important. And I doubt it does... Anything with 89. Glasses Kid, he might become a mech pilot late, late, late in the season at best. Well, I mean, from from this first episode, we didn't touch on this. 89 seems to have a past with 88, which doesn't make sense because they've, they haven't known each other until they got yeah. on board. But 89 seems to know him better than he should for somebody. So 89's whole gimmick seems to be he knows more than he should. I don't know if that's like an EX ability. Or no, it's I'm stereotypical glasses guy. Bad adjust, writing? Adjust glasses. I know everything. Bad writing. Got it. I don't know. I would watch this show maybe if it had a second season, but with only one 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 season, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch episode one, watch episode two, for this show, and never touch it again because there's enough issues. That I don't feel like a season one can wrap it up. Okay, so with that out of the way, we both maybe vaguely watch the next episode, maybe. So on to episode two. Curriculum zero one in tune. So our OP opens up again. Oh, hold on, guy. Yeah, go ahead. I do want to point out this as well. If you notice, the first episode is called Curriculum Zero Zero. The second episode is called Curriculum Zero One. All of the episodes are called Curriculum Next Sequential Number, which I can see being a tad confusing if you're trying to find this online somewhere. Yeah, most definitely. Because episode two. It's called Curriculum 1. Oh, yeah. It was slightly confusing to us, and we were using an uh, anime app on our television. Crunchyroll, to be specifically. We're not, not sponsored. Not Crunchyroll. Verve. Crunchyroll segment on Verve. Not sponsored. Hashtag not, not sponsored. Was it on Verve? Was it on Verve's Crunchyroll or was it on a high dive? Crunchyroll. Okay, cool. It's on Crunchyroll if you want to watch it, people, when we're done here. Hashtag I... not spawned. True, and also hashtag don't watch this. I mean, maybe watch it. Watch it. He just wants you to suffer as we have. So, we're on episode two, Curriculum Zero One, in tune. So, we have our opening again, and I realized something I didn't notice the first time. There are so, so many short shorts. I mean, everyone, everyone in the opening is wearing short shorts. Maybe you have to wear short shorts to pilot the goddesses. They weren't when they got out of the mechs? I have no idea. No, they were in pilot uniforms. Yeah, so it's just everyone's in short shorts. The male characters, the female characters. I'm pretty sure I saw one of the mechs in one at a point. So... After the OP, the episode opens with the exact same basic exposition that it had at the beginning of the first episode. Except this is where we learn that that fun mechanic, Lena, is called a repairer. Repairer. Yeah. Just to bring that up again. So, I do want to note, in this opening sequence when we got back from the OP, is when I personally noted how good the the background music for this show is. Oh, its music is by far the greatest thing about this show. 
The it, opening is good. Yeah. The background music throughout it is good. The ending song is all right. A lot of it vaguely Star Wars, vaguely Star Warsy, and not just because it has like a space sound, but like a lot of the musical cues feel like John Williams wrote them. They really, really do. But it's good. So we start our episode off with the weird naked girl again inside the mech, and we get another flashback. Apparently, we see a victim that is coming to attack 88 as a child on his weird space colony. Which look like spheres that are attached to giant Earth-like rocks. I'm pretty sure they're just bubbles on asteroids. That's what I said. Yeah. So, what do you know? This victim also looks like a giant fish thing. Not so much a zap fish as, if I remember correctly, kind of like a manta ray, but shriveled and kind of mixed with a, um anglerfish. It was odd. So, are all victims giant space fish? I'm pretty sure the boss is a space whale, so, no. Aquatic animals in space. So... We see the goddesses start attacking this victim. Now, not the actual goddesses. He means goddess. The mechs. The mechs. We see the mechs start attacking things. Sorry. And they circle around this giant fish thing. And what do you know? They join hands. Not really. They're really far away. But they hold their hands onto one another. And they blow it up with the friendship circle of magic. There's one thing I learned from Captain Planet. The power of friendship is everything. Would you say friendship is magic? Friendship is magic. No. So... When they do that, though, they also damage the dome 88 and his mother, who we meet in this flashback, are living in. And his mother is, and everyone else, they're wanting to get into the shelter. Well, his mother makes it in, and the shutter door slams down, and little kid 88's left out all by himself. Aw, sad zero is sad zero. He's not 88 yet. He doesn't have a number. Fine. I wish he had died here. Show would have been over. And he gets sucked out into the vacuum of space through this giant hole they blow. And what do you know... The number one candidate's mech, who we've had lots of debate about what it is, what its name is, because they are... Because in this scene, they call it Lena. They call it Lena, but in the first episode, which we didn't talk about here because we didn't have the contrast of them misnaming things, apparently, they call it the red and white one, or the rose one, which the Lena mech we meet in episode one has a blue-white motif, not a red-white motif, and looks very different. Yeah, a blue-white motif, like the blue-white outfit Gar was wearing. Yeah, so he gets grabbed by this red white one that they call lena now which i am massively confused by and they will continue to do that throughout this episode they will continue to call that one lena in addition to calling the one he's currently inside of lena so i just want to point out we have three lenas in the show now The, the the girl's mech is lena gar's mech is lena and then the repairer repairer of gar's mech is Lena. I really, really hope at least one of these Lenas was someone messing up on the subs. It has to be, right? Like I would hope, but they also do it in the dub. And it's very consistent after they mess up the first yeah, time. Yeah, it is, which is sad. So, then we kick back to our sketchy shadow guys, talking about 88 and 87. And here we find out that they are the same type of special. They have the same type of EX. We don't know exactly what 87's EX is. They have the same type of blood. They're like twinsies, except not. They're supposed to be definitely the Naruto and Sasuke of this world, and they can't even be that good, which is sad, because that's not hard. I do want to make a point, though. You were hoping 88 would die there out in, out when his space colony broke? I can dream. If he had died, the show wouldn't have been over. 87 would just be the main character now. I think I could live with that. He's not an idiot that stumbles into a mech bay and messes up everything. It's not his fault they don't know what locks are. You're not wrong. Okay, you win this round. You win this round. Congratulations. We also find out here that Candidate 87's name is Heed. Heed it? Just Heed. H-I-E-A-D. Oh. Heed. Okay. So then we cut over to 89 and 87 in a room just standing around. And 89's speculating about why 88's missing. And, you know, he continues to ultimately remain unimportant. Then their mentor, number nine, walks in and is all like, hey, where's 88? So he walks over to this computer and begins to search for him because they can do that by scanning their brand as an instructor they can search for any other person with a brand apparently or someone whom they have clearance to find so not only are these brands like literally brands melted like melting your flesh to brand you it looks more like a tattoo actually but they're also tracking devices yep so nine's trying to look for him and he can't find him via the computer so he lights a cigarette and takes off to find 88 I do want to point out, he can't find him via the computer because the computer tells him that 88 is not in G- the GOA Academy. So apparently, the mech bay, that is the basically backbone of this academy, is not 
part of the academy. Well, it might not be that. It might be that being in the Ingrid prevents him from being found by the system. But either way, it's a very poor system they have going. I mean, it may not be that poor. Nine basically immediately knows where he needs to go. He takes off to the mech bay. It's just the mech bay that you can't find people in. So That's my assumption, yeah. If you can't find somebody when you search for their brand, it means one of two things. Either they walked out one of those air gates, or they're in the mech bay. Yep. So then we cut back to 88, seeing another vision. And this one's of a planet dying because the mech says he can see the planet dying because she can see the planet dying and she can talk to him. And she continues to talk to him and asks if they are the same repeatedly because she can see what he can see and he can see what she can see. So are they the same? It's a massive robot identity crisis, I guess, going on there. So then we cut back outside because... Let's just do all these cuts back to back to back to back to back with no real rhyme or reason about why we're doing it the way we're doing it. So we cut outside just to learn that apparently he's fully synced with the mech, which is surprising to Lena, the repairer. And supposedly impossible. Yeah. And uh, Gar's shown up by this point, who's kind of also freaking out. And then this alarm goes off, and we get a nice scramble sequence. People are rushing to their mechs, and the elevator starts to descend. And on it is candidate number one. And we have this nice, heavy musical tone. That's deep, villainous horn section. It, it builds some little tension, but I don't know where the tension's going. It, it just stops when she gets to the walkway. She hits she, the walkway. It's fine now. Also, she's one of the five good guys, pilots. Yeah, so, so maybe she ends up being a villain in the end. I don't know. I mean, I assume she has to be. Because, uh, you know, apparently only men can pilot these. So only men can get inside the womenly shaped robots, not the ladies. Ladies aren't allowed in ladies. Thanks, show. Really good subtext here. Oh, it it comes across like that pretty heavily, actually, oddly. I don't know if I'm reading into that, but... I just want to confirm your suspicions. Having done a little bit of wiki reading, she does end up being a villain, so the subtext might actually be intentional. I don't want to speak for the creator, but... It's there, at least. It, it's definitely there, and it doesn't take that much to read it. Yeah. So, then we cut back to 88 inside the mech again, because why not? He's feeling really hot, he's having these pain, these visions, and he has a vision of a fire puppet. Yeah, that's right, a puppet made of fire. And the goddess is, like, overlaid behind him, apparently, like, manipulating him, because it seems almost as if, actually, the pilot doesn't control the mech. The mech controls the pilot to control themselves. Yeah, it seems like an allegory. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bad allegory. Is it a bad allegory? Think about it. The pilot, they had to replace the pilots because the pilots wear out. Because piloting the Ingrid is damaging to them. Like True. A pup, like if a it's puppet stressful. Was, if a puppet on, was on fire, you need to get a new puppet very soon or you wouldn't have a puppet anymore. Or you just make your puppets out of metal. But these puppets are flesh. You're not wrong. So, that being the case, it might be a really good metaphor if it, if it does turn out within the series that the pilots only think they have control. Okay, you're not wrong. So... Then, can you guess what we do? That's right. We immediately cut back to the outside of the mech. You guys are catching on pretty fast. I'm proud of you. And what do you know? Gar's super upset that this random nobody kid has hijacked his mech. So what does he do as his mech's raising up to launch off to fight a victim? Oh, hey, we didn't we didn't get to that alarm yet. Oh, you're right. Sorry. So Gar's still complaining to Lena about how this random kid's in his mech. And honestly, I would be too. I, you're, you, you've you become one of the top five pilot candidates in the academy you finally get a pilot a mech and then this no-name brat kid shows up and jumps in your mech and it doesn't kill him why because no one in charge of this academy had the forethought to put a lock on the door that really bugs me just to let you know like i know we're harping on it but the fact that there wasn't like some type of key lock or clearance pass to get into this hangar really annoys me it's an idiot plot it's the thing where this plot would not happen if just someone someone anyone had thought something through so while gar is yelling at the mech and yelling at his repairer who's really stressed out now and maybe about as confused as i am that she's also called lena so while he's yelling an alarm goes off in the facility that's stating that they're they're about to be under a victim attack yeah so we have this we have that scramble sequence i mentioned we see all the other pilots with their repairers we get slight brief introductions i remember no one because there was no characterization there we had People, and then mechs. People and stereotypes. Yep. Really bad stereotypes, given, like, where they're from. It's just like, 
here's this region of the world, here's the stereotype you would think of for this region of the world. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So, Gar, not wanting to be left out of the whole I'm gonna go fight a victim thing, because this is what I apparently live for, jumps on his mech. Like, on this, on the front of his chest, which is rather smooth, and he's definitely gonna fall off. Has, like, no handholds. None. This dude should be dead. Yeah. He's barely hanging on, like, Gar has some intense finger strength. I'm pretty sure he rock climbs on the weekends. There's asteroids. You can climb those, right? There's no gravity, so is it really climbing? You can rock cling on the weekends? Sure. So, while he's doing this, Lena, the repairer, not the mech, finally gets the mech Lena to disengage. Well, as that's happening, because everything's happening at once, we get another cutaway. We get another cutaway to 88 inside the mech. And so it's rather unclear, coming up with, whether Lena actually manages to disengage the robot, or 88, who is now having flashbacks and panicking about how he doesn't want to leave home, and he's talking to the mech and claims that he's not ready to be a pilot yet, and he's talking and talking, and this annoying, weird robot ghost lady, he's trying to get her to back off, and she doesn't want to. So because they're not green basically they start to unsync so it's unclear if the efforts of our noble repairer outside lena is responsible or if robot lena is responsible for the unsinking but we do know lena is responsible for the desync there is a lena and she is responsible so that happens and so the chest hatch open and guard just plunges his head in his hand in this weird gunk and rips 88 out throws him backwards and he's probably a good 15 feet up from this platform now and about three feet away from it so he just throws the skid to basically die it actually looks more like he's like five to six feet from from the platform at this point distance wise distance wise it's still about 15 feet up yeah he just throws the skid to die and he would if what do you know instructor number nine is there and he kind of grabs him pulls him back onto it because i i guess we need to keep this kid alive we can't kill the main character in episode two can we not this isn't Shaman King. We're killing the main character is an amazing twist. No, it's Gurren Logan. Giant mechs. Main character dies. I'm still kind of okay with it. That's right. Fight me. I don't like Kamina. He has bad opinions. It's okay, people. That is his name, right? I didn't enjoy that show. So, 88's thrown out to the bridge, and the Ingrid's prepare to launch. Yep. And... That's the end of the episode. Almost. We cut back over to 88, who's unconscious. And what do you know? We have another vision cutaway. It's the girl under the tree just standing there watching him because why not? And that's the end of the episode. That's the end of the episode, yeah. Just to sum it up, the show is about goddesses who are also robots piloted by five unique people that can only pilot one individual robot each. And they can only pilot because they're fun blood types. And two robots are named Lena and there's a repairer named Lena that works on one of the Lenas. That's the show. Yeah. So, Josh, by the end of episode two, how are you feeling? This show wants to do too much. It's only got 13 episodes. Sorry, people, not 12. I have it in my notes here. 13 episodes to finish this. It has a lot of issues, namely the two mechs named Lena, one of which I'm sure is a production issue, not an actual storytelling issue, but we can't judge it based on the manga because we're watching the anime. I don't want to read the manga. I don't want to go anywhere near it or anything else related to the show. Well, the manga might actually wrap some stuff up because what, because another thing here, it's got 13 episodes, but it's got 13 episodes because the studio didn't get funding for a second season, which I have no idea why. No clue whatsoever why. And this season was actually supposed to be longer than, than it was. I think it was supposed to be an 18 episode season. That's just a weird number to work with, but okay. But it might have been a 22 episode season, but it, it got cut funding in the middle of the season development before episode one even aired so it's not like episode one aired it did badly and the the funding got cut it was they were in the middle of developing the storyline and they were told they have half the half the amount of episodes they thought they had to work with well i'm not blaming like just the animators or people in sound or even the directors i'm blaming everyone it was a group project everyone can take the blame okay i will happily share that blame around i'll pass it around each and every individual they can fill my warm warm hatred okay hatred is probably a bit strong but i really did not enjoy this apathy is that a better word for you no because i don't care i do strictly because we made ourselves watch this so my dislike they can have my dislike so as much as i think we're both in agreement, this show isn't worth watching no it acts like it's going to go to the moon. 
and it's not it's not going anywhere. It's not even breaking atmosphere. Nah, like, you know that old saying, shoot for the moon and we're straight up among the stars, whatever it is. You'd also end up blowing up in the atmosphere and not even mattering. Yeah, you could uh, you could do worse than Challenger, which this show did. This show did very badly. But while we're harping on how bad this show is, I do want to make two two points I really liked about the show. One, again, the music, so good. They build tension well. They use it to like transition very well. The music in this show is good. Second point, and it goes back to the dub. Whoever was doing the voice acting for, for the repair of Lena, good voice actress. Yeah, you're not wrong. And I know I mentioned it was stupid earlier, but actually by the end of episode two, that dress shirt with built-in gloves, it grew on me. I just can't stop laughing at it. It's That's why it grew on me. It's amazing, and I want one. It was the best part of this anime, in my opinion. And I don't even think it was meant to be a comedic gag. It just turned out being that way. I wouldn't be surprised if in the manga, it's actually a shirt and then gloves. Someone just forgot to draw that separating line, and they just ran with it after the key animation. Someone's like, this is, this is the key animation frame we already have. We can't afford to go back and have that person draw this again. Just ink it, call it good, tell everyone doing the in-between shots he does not have gloves, it's all the dress shirt. Based on all the issues that plagued this show, 100% that's what I think. You know, I buy that actually, I really do. Okay, this was Pilot Candidates, or also called Emotion the Best, the candidate for Goddess. And this has been Co-Pilots. Thank you for flying with us, and please, fly again. Here to bother you some more. We want to thank you for listening to that 45 ish minute of us rambling on our pilot episode of Co Pilots Review. And we want to reaffirm some things here. First, we're an anime podcast. Th- no, no, don't listen to him. He's a liar. You'll learn that soon. He's the untrustworthy one here. We are not an anime podcast. But we just did an episode entirely about anime. Only, only one. It's not, it's not certain. It's not guaranteed. We're not just doing anime. So what's our next episode then if we're not an anime podcast? Well, first I'd like to establish, we're, as I said, we're not just doing anime. We're going to do live action things, anime, cartoons, web series, podcasts, whatever we feel like doing. If it has more than two episodes, we might review it. Like Star Wars even? I mean, who knows what the future holds? Except for we do know what the future holds for our next episode. Is it another anime? It is not. Okay. It is going to be Joss Whedon's spinoff series, Angel. Oh, I love Joss Whedon. I loved Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, you know, Angel spinoff might be fun. He's never done me wrong before. I mean, that first episode of Firefly was all right. But from what I understand, it was the studio and not him. So you make a point. Okay, well, so co-pilots review. Co-pilots review. And if you liked what you listened to, which hopefully you did, that's why we made it. But if you didn't, who can blame you? Either way, though, you should definitely follow us on Twitter, at Copilots Review. And if you have any questions or want to contact us or suggest a show for us to watch, feel free to email us at copilotsreview at gmail.com. Thank you guys for listening. That was the first episode of Copilots Review Podcast. And I've been Josh. And I've been Justice. And hopefully you'll fly again with us soon.